Hi, this is Dr. Mahadevan, and we're going to be talking about basic life support in airway management. This is part one. And our objectives for this lecture are going to be to review the principles of basic life support and also those of basic airway management. And everything I'm going to talk about today can be found in this issue of circulation from November 2010, available at the Circulation Journal's website as listed on your screen. If we think about basic life support uh, in total, uh, this is basically how we're going to go through it. First, you're going to determine if a patient is unresponsive. The next step is going to be to check for a pulse. And then based on whether they have a pulse or not, you are going to either provide only ventilation if they have a pulse, or both compressions and ventilations if they don't have a pulse until an AED or defibrillator arrives. So let's go through this in much more detail. Again, first thing you're gonna do is, when you come to a patient, check for response to see if they are responsive or not. So you're gonna tap the victim on the right shoulder or, or, or their shoulder and ask them, are you all right? So this gentleman finds a patient, he looks unresponsive, taps him on the shoulder, and then says, are you all right? The patient does not respond, and so the first thing that he does is call for help. So once you determine that the patient is unresponsive, the next step is to call for help. And what do I mean by calling for help? That is, if you have access to a phone, you're gonna dial 911, or if you are in a setting like a hospital or clinic, you're gonna call for an AED, or a defibrillator. That's gonna be the next step when you're calling for help. After calling for help, the next step is to check for a pulse. So where do you check for a pulse? There's many locations you can check, radially, femorally, brachially, or the carotid. It really depends on the patient's age and their condition. In a responsive patient who is over the age of one or greater than or equal to one, you're gonna check at their radial pulse location. So you're gonna check for a radial pulse. If they're less than one, regardless of their condition, you're gonna check for a brachial pulse as this clinician is doing right here. You're gonna check for a brachial pulse in any child who's less than uh, one. And then regardless of uh, their, if they're, excuse me, if they're over the age of one and they're unresponsive, the location that you're gonna check for a pulse is the carotid artery. You're gonna check for a carotid pulse. So the patient's age and responsiveness determine where you check for a pulse. Responsive and greater than or equal to one, it's a radial pulse. Age less than one, always, regardless of whether they're responsive or not, you're gonna check at the brachial location, and then if they're unresponsive and over the age of one or equal to one, you're gonna check for a carotid pulse. Remember when you're checking for a pulse not to spend more than 10 seconds. If after 10 seconds, you can't determine whether the patient has a pulse or not, then just assume that they don't have a pulse. Uh, we know that Patients have better outcomes when we initiate chest compressions faster or earlier, and the way we determine whether someone needs a chest compressions or not is whether they have a pulse. So when in doubt, assume that the patient has no pulse. So again, when we think of the basic life support and airway management algorithm, the first step is to determine whether the patient is responsive or not. Then you're gonna call for help, and after you've called for help, the next step is going to be to check for a pulse. Thank you very much.